because I think a lot of people go, well, I, I don't like healthier things, so I won't eat them. Well, maybe you're just so toxic, doesn't taste good. Well, that's a really good point. Um, it's actually, the, and the toxins absolutely do play into it, but probably even more important than that is what we call the microbiome. Um, so you may have heard this term. It's referring to all the flora that live on us and in us. Um, so the average human person has about 100 trillion cells, and of that 100 trillion cells, 90 trillion are not human DNA. They are bacteria, viruses, protozoa, parasites, all kinds of different things. And in the past, this is, it's really relatively new science. We've only known about this for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so in the past, we all were told that germs and bacteria were bad for us. Mm -hmm. But now we know that we cannot live without these things. Mm -hmm. So most of this is in our guts, and it's in very intimate communication with your immune system. Uh, about two-thirds of your immune system is actually in your gut because no food is sterile, and um, this the, the outside world is literally what we are taking into ourselves, and so your immune system has to be very active there. And it turns out that these critters, the, the bacteria and viruses and so forth, emit chemicals that tell you what they want to eat. Uh -huh. And so if you have been feeding a certain type of food in, you're going to grow those kind of bugs that want to eat that. Uh -huh. And when you change your diet, they're going to go, wait a minute, I really liked french fries or donuts or whatever what? it was, and they're going to protest. And they may even have little, I, I say they're, I'm dying, when you really dramatically change your diet. And um, this is where some people have, they call it a detox reaction or a healing crisis or the keto flu or different kinds of terminology that people use for why they don't feel so good when they try to make those changes. And so then they end up going back to what they were doing before because they don't feel good. It is a reality that you may have to go through a little bit of that in order to actually get healthy. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that we do at our clinic, we have many ways to help people minimize the effects of that mm -hmm. um, so that it isn't such a hard thing to do. One of the things I try to help people do is not beat themselves up because they're craving something. Because it really isn't you craving this. Yeah. This isn't a character defect. Um, this is the critter, critters that you've been feeding. And so they're going to say, hey, where's that cheese that you usually right, give me? Right, right. Or, you know, the popsicle or right. whatever it happens to be. And um, they will very vociferously talk to your cells to try to get you to go get what they want. So, for instance, a, a common scenario is the person is doing whatever they're doing, their, their work, their um, leisure activities or whatever, and the thought comes into their head of a cheeseburger or yeah. whatever it is that their favorite food is. That's because the microbiome said, oh, it's time for a cheeseburger. <laughs> Yesterday at 6 o'clock, you fed me a cheeseburger. And so it's 6 o'clock now. I want another one. <laughs> <laughs> they have the puppeteer strings more than we think. They absolutely do.